أشعة التشخيصية في جامعة الإسكندرية أهلا بحضراتكم وشكرا جزيلا على الدعوة الكريمة كنت أتمنى أن أبقى موجودة بشخصي معكم بس إن شاء الله في المرات القادمة ويسعدني أن أنا أشارككم بشغلي في أشعة الآثار والمومياوات اللي ابتديته من سنة 2004 إلى الآن ويسعدني أن أنا أتواصل معكم على الإيميل اللي هحطه في آخر المحاضرة وسعيد أن أشوفكم إن شاء الله مرة قادمة شكرا جزيلا The only country that has a science with its name to study its monuments and mummies is Egypt. Ancient Egyptians believed in immortality and life after death. They believed that everyone had a soul that survived after death. The soul was in the shape of a bird with a head similar to that of the deceased. The soul and the body had to be united to reach the perfect afterlife. So ancient Egyptians invented mummification to preserve the dead body for the life after. However, ancient Egyptians did not leave any writing about mummification. We know about the process from the notes of Herodotus, an ancient Greek traveler who visited Egypt later the civilization he described the process that was in three levels according to the cost, the most expensive, the moderate, and the cheap. Mummification took 70 days in special workshops. The embalmers removed the internal organs to avoid body putrefaction. Then placed the bodies to dry in salt. They wrapped the bodies using linen bandage that may reach 1.5 miles in length. The embalmers placed amulets inside the body and between the wrappings for protection. The embalmers placed the mummy inside the coffin and sometimes in nested coffins like the case of King Tutankhamun. In the funeral, the mummified body was moved with its belongings to the tomb, accompanied by members of the family, friends, and professional women mourners. The royal tombs in ancient Egypt were inside the pyramids or in underground shafts in Saqqara near Cairo. Royal tombs were built in the rocky mountains of the Valley of the Kings in Luxor in the New Kingdom. The tombs had drawings and writings to support the disease in his journey. Here is the, the tomb of Tutankhamun and the Valley of the Kings in Luxor. More than 5,000 objects were found inside the tomb of King uh, Tutankhamun. Then the tombs were sealed and meant to be locked for eternity. But the ancient Egyptian tombs have been a target for thieves since ancient times through our modern days. The 19th century witnessed massive excavations that resulted in unearthing thousands of mummies. Many mummies were smuggled to the market to be purchased by the European and American tourists who carried them home as curiosities. It was common at that time in Europe and America to find advertisements for public and private parties of unwrapping ancient Egyptian mummies. But this was the result of the brutal unwrapping of the mummies. The mummies even were dissected and cut open into pieces in the Western museums in the name of science. Ancient pots and closed objects were broken open to see what was inside them. In these dark ages in Europe and America, mummies were grinned 
and the mummy powder was ingested as a medicine or burnt as an incense. Ground mummies were used as a paint with its characteristic mummy brown color for decades in the West. Worst of all, thousands of ancient Egyptian mummies were used as fertilizer for British land in 1890. It wasn't until in 1895 when the mysterious rays called X-rays was discovered accidentally by Röntgen. Few months later, in 1896, these mysterious X-rays were tested on ancient Egyptian human and cat mummies. And for the first time, one could see what was inside the sealed mummy without wrapping it. X-rays are electromagnetic waves of small wavelength, invisible to the eyes. X-rays cannot pass through solid objects such as the bones or metals, but can pass through soft tissues. That makes X-ray film differentiate between structures inside the body. X-raying mummy, one could see what was inside of a mummy without uh, uh, unwrapping it or dissecting it. This marked the birth of paleoradiology, which is uh, the uh, using medical imaging for investigations of ancient culture. This is an, a non-invasive modality to study ancient bodies and objects without dissecting them. The uh, paleoradiology can show what is inside the mummy, even if it was inside a coffin. However, there is limitation of X-rays because when the 3D body is projected on the 2D film sheet, some data are lost. Paleoradiology coped with the advancement of the imaging technology and CT is an advanced form of X-ray. The machine takes hundreds of thin sections of the body like slices of a toast. When combined, they form a complete 3D image of the whole body. In 1977, the first ancient Egyptian mummy was CT scanned in Toronto, a mummy of a young woman, a musician in the temple of Amun-Ra from the 22nd dynasty. My name is Sahar Salim. I'm a professor of neuroradiology at Qasr al Faculty of Medicine in Cairo, Egypt. My institute was founded in 1827. I'm a neuroradiologist. I'm a radiologist for, for humans, but I became a paleoradiologist by accident. It was in 2004 while I was studying in Canada, a fellowship in neuroradiology at the University of Western Ontario. And on my first day in the hospital, an ancient Egyptian mummy from the local museum was brought for a CT scan. I joined and started my studies in paleoradiology in addition to neuroradiology. When I came back to Egypt in 2006, I joined the Ministry of Antiquities till date and became the doctor of the museum. One of the projects I joined was to study the royal mummies of the New Kingdom. Kings and queens of the New Kingdom, such as Tutankhamun, Ramses, Tohotmos, City. The New Kingdom actually, about 3,000 years ago, was the climax of the civilization. And the royal mummies are the most preserved ancient bodies in the whole world. In this presentation, I will show you my experience as the radiologist of the pharaohs. And what is it like to be a radiologist? The royal mummies of the New Kingdom resided at Cairo Egyptian Museum for more than a century. I use a CT machine placed on a truck in the garden of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo behind this false wall. This is likely the only museum in the world that has its own scanner. 
The mummies are transferred from the museum to the truck. I do the CT scan and a software to do the image reconstruction. For example, this mummy inside the coffin by doing the different um, windows, I can see the mummy inside the coffin and I can see even what is inside or remove the coffin and look at the mummy. I also do systematic analysis for each mummy to analyze its preservation status, sex, age at death, mummification style, if any jewelry and amulets are placed inside, to do a phase three construction, to study for diseases of the body and teeth, and if lucky, to know the cause of death. CT helped me to bring the royal ancient bodies back to life through determining the sex from the different shape of the skull and pelvis, estimating the age based on teeth, eruption, or fusion of bone in juvenile bodies, uh, teeth attrition and joint degeneration, and the appearance of the surface of the symphysis pubis in adult mammals. I had also a unique experience when I studied the two miniature mummies, each placed in a nested coffin, found inside a box in the tomb of King Tutankhamun. I did the CT scan for the two mummies, a small one and a larger one. CT scan showed multiple post-mortem fractures in both mummies, especially the smaller one. This must have been caused by the bad storage of the mummies. My CT studies proved that the mummies were for two human female fetuses. The appearance of the bone centers and teeth buds enabled me to estimate their ages for 25 weeks and 36 weeks of pregnancy for the smaller and the bigger one respectively. The fetuses received royal mummification standard and did not show any congenital anomalies. DNA proved that they were the daughters of Tutankhamun. This was the first CT study ever done for an ancient mummified fetus. And thus I set the model for future CT scans for, of ancient mummified fetuses. This uh, uh, study was I published it in the American Journal of Rontgenology in 2011. In a project with Cairo Egyptian Museum, I studied several objects at the basement untouched for more than a century. One of the objects was a pot with its opening seemed to be a top of a child's head. I placed this pot inside the CT scanner. CT scan virtually cut open the pot to show the mummy no teeth eruption. The stature was 52 centimeters. From the head circumference, the age was five to six months. The cranial sutures show that the posterior fontanel and the sphenoid fontanels are closed, while the anterior fontanel and the mastoid uh, are open. The mummy included transnasal brain removal of the brain and as well as complete evisceration. There were no skeletal malformation or evident of a cause of death, which could be a viral or related to other diseases 
or uh, in the removed viscera. Marriage and family were valued in ancient Egypt. Children were considered a blessing and were cared for. Sons and daughters took care of their parents in their old age and were called the staff of old age. There was a personal, familial, and cultural recognition of children, even at the, fet the fetal stage. Tangret, the chief deity for protecting pregnancy and newly born, was in the form of hippopotamus with lactating breasts and close to attack the enemies of the fetus or the newly born. Tower holds in her hands the Ankh, symbol of life for the fetus. The fetus was recognized as a separate identity. A prayer was repeated at the time of labor. Amun, make the heart of the deliverer strong and keep alive the one that is coming. By this form of recognition, miscarriage or a stillborn child becomes the death of a family member who must be mourned and had the same funerary rituals as any adult. I published the city studies of the royal mummies in a book scanning the pharaohs. The book won prose 2017 as the best popular science book by the American publisher, as well as a Choice Award in 2016, Outstanding Academic Title by the American Association of College and Research Libraries. Thank you.